This video will walk you through the disassembly and reassembly of the Microsoft Surface Pro 9 with 5G. Before you begin, ensure that your work surface is covered with an ESD-safe non-marring material. Equip an anti-static wrist strap, ensure your work area is properly grounded and safe, and lastly, make sure you're wearing protective eyewear as a safety precaution. If you're performing any repair that requires removing the display, make sure to remove the RSSD first. Removing the RSSD disconnects the battery from all the other components. It's important to note that you should not proceed with repair if your battery is damaged in any way, or damage to the battery happens or is discovered at any point. Lastly, make sure you're using a Microsoft service guide for your specific device and using Microsoft official parts only for any repair that you're performing. The service guide has more detailed step-by-step -step instructions and clarifications for terms or references you may not be familiar with. To begin disassembly, make sure that your device is powered off and disconnected from the power supply, and then place the device face down on your work surface and open the kickstand to approximately 90 degrees. While bracing the back of the kickstand with your hand, use a 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the two hinge screws. While grasping both hinges, lower them to about 45 degrees, and then hold your kickstand with your thumb on top and pull the kickstand up and away to free it from the threaded bosses. Firmly hold the chassis in place with one hand and then pull the kickstand with a moderate amount of force until the foam inserts slide out of the device. If the kickstand feels stuck, make sure that the threaded bosses are free and haven't slipped back into their recesses. Inspect the removed kickstand's foam tabs for any damage and make sure that they're complete and show no signs of tearing. If the tabs or pads show any sign they may have torn or left pieces behind in the device, proceed to the chassis replacement procedure. To access the RSSD, begin by inserting your SIM eject tool into the hole in the RSSD door. Press down until the door pops up and then lift it off the device. Use a 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the single screw securing the RSSD. When the screw is removed, the RSSD will pop up slightly. Gently grasp it by its sides and pull it out from its socket at about a 15 degree angle. To begin display disassembly, begin by inserting an opening tool to widen the gap between the right speaker mesh and the display. Turn the opening pick around and press it in between the speaker mesh and the chassis, pushing the speaker mesh towards the inside of the device. Repeat this process for the left speaker mesh. To separate the display, we'll be using an opening pick and debonding tool, but we need to make sure that we never insert the pick more than we need to for the next few steps. Measure your opening pick and mark a 2mm depth and an 8mm depth on it. This will help guide you as you slice through the adhesive securing the display. Insert your marked pick into the debonding tool, making sure all lines are visible and facing towards the top of the tool, and then clamp the debonding tool to the edge of your workbench. Using a 3mm hex wrench, adjust the tool to the 2mm mark on your pick. When using the debonding tool, make sure not to insert the pick deeper than instructed for each edge. The 2mm setting should be used for the left, right, and bottom edges of the device. The 8mm setting should only be used on the top edge. Place the right side speaker edge of the device into the debonding tool above the pick, making sure the tip of the pick enters the gap you made in the speaker grill between the display and chassis. Using both hands, slide the right edge of the display through the debonding tool. When you get to the bottom edge of the corner, slowly rotate the device to slide the pick around the bottom right corner of the screen. Next, slide the bottom edge of the display across the debonding tool. Repeat this process for the left side of the device. Adjust the pick height to your 8mm mark and then place the top left corner of the device into the debonding tool, making sure the pick enters the gap between the display and chassis. Slide the top edge of the device across the debonding tool to cut the final bit of adhesive. Lift each edge of the display gently to make sure there's no remaining adhesive. If you find any, use an opening pick to cut it. With the battery now exposed, it's recommended to use a Microsoft provided ESD safe battery cover to protect the battery from accidental damage during the rest of the repair. Ensure that the ESD safe battery cover is correctly positioned and covers the battery completely for the remainder of the repair. Using a pair of tweezers, Remove the display cable shield, and then use the flat end of your spudger to disconnect the display cable from its connector. Use an opening pick to remove any remaining speaker mesh from the chassis, and then visually confirm that both have been fully removed. Using your tweezers, lift the lower right edge of the CPU shield up. Once it's fully released, lift it up and off. Remove the eight 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the thermal module. 
Insert the flat edge of your spudger between the heat pipe and the shield, and then lightly lift the copper heat pipe until it separates from the CPU. Carefully lift the thermal module out, making sure not to bend it. Keep an eye on the shield spring during this step, it's possible that it will also come out. Use your spudger to scrape off the thermal material from the CPU area, and then use some isopropyl alcohol to remove any residual material. Using a pair of tweezers, pry the T2 shield up and off the motherboard, and then disconnect the display cable using your spudger and lift it up and off. To disconnect the Surflink connector, begin by lifting the cable's locking bar to release it. Use the point of a spudger to push the edges of the connector out of its socket, and then use a 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the two screws securing the Surflink connector to the chassis. Peel the Surflink cable away from the chassis and lift it out. Before starting the battery removal process, remove any jewelry, put on gloves and safety glasses, and prepare a bucket of sand in case of a battery event, such as swelling, smoking, puncture, overheating, or fire. To begin, use your spudger to disconnect the battery's press contact, and then use your screwdriver to remove the nine Torx Plus screws securing the battery. With gloved hands, hold the battery by its plastic frame only, and lift it out of the chassis, making sure not to bend, twist, or drop it. Using your 3IP Torx Plus driver, remove the two screws securing the button PCB, and then lift the board out. Place your finger over the button clip, and then use your tweezers to pry it up and out. Repeat this process for both the volume and power button clips. With the clips released, press the button post to eject the buttons from the chassis. The left and right speakers are held in place by three 3IP Torx Plus screws. Remove those screws and then lift the speakers up and out. Using a pair of tweezers, remove the two shields covering the Wi-Fi deck by lifting them up from the corner and then disconnect the three cables connecting the Wi-Fi deck to the motherboard. Remove the four 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the Wi-Fi deck to the chassis and then lift the Wi-Fi deck out. To remove the cameras, begin by using your spudger to disconnect the front camera's cable from the motherboard and then gently pry it out. Disconnect the rear camera's cable from the motherboard, remove the two 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the camera to the chassis, and then lift it out. Using a pair of tweezers, remove the nine antenna shields from the motherboard. Next, use an IPEX tool to disconnect the antenna cables from the motherboard. There are nine 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the motherboard to the chassis. Remove those and then disconnect the remaining cables from the motherboard, deshielding them if necessary. Remove the three 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the antenna board to the chassis, disconnect the press contact, and then lift the board out. Deroute the two antenna cables from the bottom of the motherboard, and then using two hands, carefully lift the motherboard out. If your new chassis comes with the upper left antenna pre-installed, it will need to be removed before reinstalling the motherboard. To reinstall the motherboard, begin by lowering the motherboard into place starting from the left side. Make sure to align the screw holes with the standoffs on the chassis and that there are no cables trapped underneath the board. Reinstall the nine 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the motherboard to the chassis. Place the upper left antenna board back into the chassis, secure it with three 3IP Torx Plus screws, and then reconnect its press connector. Reconnect all the press contact cables to the motherboard, replacing shields where necessary. Reroute the two antenna cables through their brackets along the bottom edge of the motherboard, and then using your IPEX tool, carefully align and reconnect the antenna cables to their sockets on the motherboard. Each antenna must go back to the same location it was removed. The wire should be just long enough to return them to their original position. Reinstall the nine antenna shields on the motherboard by pressing down with your finger to connect them. After cleaning the rear camera's lens with a microfiber cloth, use your fingers to gently place the rear camera into the chassis and secure it with two 3IP Torx Plus screws. Once secure, connect the rear camera's cable to the motherboard. Place the front camera into the chassis, making sure it's aligned over the two posts, and then use your finger to press down to reconnect the front camera's cable to the motherboard. Clean off any fingerprints or smudges on the front camera with a microfiber cloth. 
lower the Wi-Fi deck into place, and reinstall the four 3IP Torx Plus screws securing it to the chassis. Once secured, gently press the three connectors into place on the motherboard. Reinstall the two Wi-Fi deck shields by pressing down with your finger to snap them into place. Place the left and right speakers into place, making sure to align them with the posts in the chassis, and then reinstall the three 3IP Torx Plus screws securing each of them. Insert the volume and power buttons into the chassis, making sure the small location pin on the power button is to the left of the button post when inserting it. Reinstall the button board and secure it to the chassis using two 3IP Torx Plus screws. Do not reuse the old battery when performing repairs. Always use a new battery when the old battery has been removed from the device. Only handle the new battery with the plastic loops that come attached to the new battery. Bending, twisting, or impacting the battery may result in damage to the battery, damage to the device, and or personal injury or property damage. Always use two hands when handling the battery. With gloved hands, inspect for any debris in the chassis, and then gently lower the battery into place. Secure it with 10 Torx Plus screws, and then inspect the battery to verify that it's in good condition. There should be no punctures, swelling, or deformations. Finally, press down to reconnect the battery cable to the motherboard. You should hear an audible snap. Insert the circling port at a 30 degree angle and secure it using two 3IP Torx Plus screws. The magnetized port may attract the screws during this process. Slide the circling cable into place and then secure the cable's locking bar. Before installing the thermal module, inspect the spring gasket for any damage and replace it if necessary. Clean any existing thermal putty off the motherboard and reapply new thermal putty in the following locations. Make sure to consult the manual for the specific amount of thermal putty to use in these locations. Align the thermal module with the screw holes on the motherboard, making sure not to bend or twist it. Once in place, verify the alignment by making sure the thermal module is placed over the two posts in the chassis. Reinstall the eight 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the motherboard to the chassis, and then align a new CPU shield over the spring gasket and press it into place. Carefully inspect the internal area of the chassis for any foreign objects or loose screws, and verify that the battery has no signs of damage. Then, lay out new display adhesive and replacement speaker grills in the correct position. Clean the chassis along the display adhesive bonding surface with some high-strength isopropyl alcohol, and let it dry for at least 30 seconds before reapplying new adhesive. When you're ready, apply four new strips of adhesive to the chassis by removing the clear aligner and carefully placing them. Leave the blue liner on for now. Remove the protective liner from a replacement speaker grill and align it with the display speaker opening. The speaker mesh has three areas of mesh offset to one side. Place the mesh facing towards the bottom edge of the device and the section of solid adhesive should face the top edge. Once it's in place, use the edge of a plastic card to press the mesh into place for about 10 seconds to activate the adhesive and then remove the blue liner. Repeat this process for the other side. While supporting the display with your hand, align the display's cable to its socket on the motherboard and then press it into place. Next, install a new shield over the cable connector. While holding the display, remove all the blue liners, exposing the adhesive. Align the display with the bottom edge first and then lower it into place. Make sure the glass fits flush in the chassis and doesn't rest anywhere on top of the chassis lip. The next few steps will cover display bonding, and there are a couple of ways to successfully bond your display to the chassis depending on the tools available to you. If you're using ruck weights, start with your device screen side up on your work surface and then place a bonding frame on top of it, making sure the cutouts align with the power and volume buttons. Place a foam pad on top of the bonding frame and then add the 32 kilogram ruck weight on top of the foam, letting it sit for at least two minutes. If you're using steel shot bags, start by inserting your device into the bonding frame and flipping it over display side down onto a foam pad on your work surface. Add the shot bags to the top of the foam pad. Their weight should equal 32 kilograms. Let the weight sit for at least two minutes. Inspect the display for scratches, cracks, gaps, and flushness with the chassis. To reinstall the RSSD, slide it into its socket on the motherboard at a 15 degree angle and then secure it with a single 3IP Torx Plus screw. Slot the top of the RSSD door into the chassis and press down to secure it. 
Flip the device over, position the hinges at about a 45 degree angle, and then gently slide the kickstand tabs about three quarters of the way into their slots, and then slightly rotate the kickstand about five degrees to catch the outer lip of the hinge. The tabs should slide in easily. Excessive force may crumple them. Reseat the threaded bosses into their recesses, and then grasp the hinges and open the kickstand about 90 degrees. Apply some Loctite activator to the hinge screws and a drop of thread locker in each screw hole, and then use your 3IP Torx Plus driver to reinstall new hinge screws. Hold the kickstand down, remove any plastic if present, and then verify that its edges line up with the case and there are no obvious gaps. With the device reassembled, power it on and run SDT to ensure all functions and features operate as expected.